clothes. One of the most valuable books a person can get. You want to know your history? Your history is going to be found in this book. As we go along, you can see it's just hemp, hemp, hemp. Everything is just a tremendous place to come visit and to check out. As we mosey on along, we'll find that we got some uh, magazines down low here. And of course, all the music on top. A little more magazines over here on the rack. So we got different magazines, you know, from all around the world. All kinds of different hemp products. As you can see, it's just it's quite, a, quite an array of things here. You can literally spend all day here shopping around and not get bored. And we got lots more to show you. There's a lot more to this place than meets the eye. But what, what we're initially showing you now is ground level. You walk in, this is open to the general public. You come around this side here, we can see we've got some insects. An array of rolling papers. I love this because over in Victoria we'll generally see the raw papers and uh, maybe a few others, but we got a general mass array of uh, papers and we can see a good collection down here in the glass gathering. A good collection of different stickers from around the world, I'm sure, and uh, as well as the stickers. Just a great supply. We circle around, we get to my favorite section. This is the clothing section. And this is where we're going to actually buy something here today. We're just not sure what. We're going to actually get a hemp sweater, probably, is what we've been targeting. But as you can see, it's really hard to pick any one hemp sweater out with such, a, with such an array to, uh, to pick from. Uh, that alone, the, the hemp pants that are available. So uh, it's, it's very hard to just say that there's any one thing that we want to pick. Even a hemp nap or a backpack would be, uh, would be pretty cool. You know, last me for the rest of my life. You know, they built the house out of hemp, but they would call the houses a pyramid, or houses of Gaza. Only well, the houses of Canada. We started building the first. <laughs> anyway, we continue along here. You can see a wide variety of uh, different movies. I'm going to try and make my selection while we're actually live on, on film here. And we'll edit this out accordingly. You want it to take it Maybe we won't pick it out live on film. We're just going to keep circling around here. Okay. Okay, as you can see, we got hemp purses here as well. I mean, the BCMP is the place to be. There's the saying for you. Um, well, there's everything. There's hemp belts, there's hemp wallets. You just keep going along. I mean, there's, there's hemp clothing galore. This makes hemp and company actually, you know, really, uh, really shine, I guess, because a lot of these are probably based uh, from hemp, com hemp and company and moved forward. Um, we're just going to seg back out here for customers that are behind us, and we're trying not to get anybody on film. So back, okay, so out. as you can see, we were uh, zipping around the, uh, the BCMP, and, uh, you know, I had uh, I'd made some additional stops, and, uh, you know, within the building, and, um, of course, we can only get so many people that were willing to come on and, and uh, talk a little bit. However, the next gentleman, um, I really didn't get, I would have loved to do a, a much longer interview. We were just in a real hurry, and that's Mr. Chris Bennett. And uh, he came on and he has himself a little shop in the back there um, with a, a quite an exotic array of uh, stuff that he's going to talk about a little bit um, while we're in there. And uh, I really like how he briefly sums up the reason again we went over it was it's, it was World's AIDS Day, December 1st, yesterday. And uh, we were very impressed with, uh, uh, with his answer. It was a, a simple answer. I just, I believe it was uh, cannabis in relation to, uh, to HIV AIDS. And, um, you know, I posted that question to a few people yesterday, and it was good to see some of the, the responses. So, uh, you know, with Chris Bennett, it, it, it was very interesting to uh, to uh, to actually see what they're doing over there. I mean, they they've got their uh, they've got their stuff, and it's uh, you know, of course, it's bordering on the the gray area of the law, like with most things. But at the same time, they share the same fundamental beliefs that a lot of us do, including myself, that these plants are simply plants and are our God-given right and uh, something that should be controlled by man. On that note, um, one of our other freedom fighters, such as Michelle Rainey, um, uh, allowed my daughter to select any necklace she wanted. Um, <laughs> we happened to have our daughter with us there and, uh, and allowed her to pick out any necklace. So Michelle, this is the one she picked out and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, she does look after it and uh, care for it very much and, um, and she does wear it. 
So anyway, let's go check out what Chris Bennett had to say. And, uh, in the back here with Chris Bennett and uh, Chris Bennett's um, little shop he's got going here. And uh, I really, this is my first time in here, so I this first time meeting Chris. And uh, I did film Chris last year at the uh, 10th Annual Convention for the uh, International Hempology 101 Society. So I'm here today, and uh, tell us a little bit about your... Uh, your We're shaman. We specialize in like shamanic plants, like peyote, ayahuasca, uh, um, as well as relaxants like kava kava, kratom, you know. Uh, a big thing with our shop is, is the, the idea that plants are a natural right. And so we try to provide people with as many uh, uh, psychoactive, relaxing, energetic type plants that we can legally without getting raided in here, uh, as well as educate a little bit about these plants and the history of them and the use of them and that type of stuff. Absolutely, and after hearing you speak, of course, we, we, we know that, uh, that um, just as we can, it was uh, mushrooms we were using medicinally for thousands of years, and uh, of course, the government would rather us not talk about that. Because yeah. Big Pharma, I guess, has their, their hands in it. Um, and just as a quick segment, I, don't, I know you're a busy guy and I don't want to take too much of your time because we're really trying to get all around the city here in one day. But um, one question for you here today is how would you sum this up for you? What's World AIDS Day in relation to cannabis mean to you? Well, I think, you know, cannabis is probably one of the, the, the big things for, for, for medical mar for AIDS is, is medical marijuana. And, uh, you know, a big part of the reason why there's been such a push for medical marijuana has been due to the development of AIDS. And, you know, in Vancouver here, I believe uh, we have the lowest, like, death rate for, for AIDS currently and stuff like that, uh, for people infected and stuff. And I think a large part of that is because of the large amount of marijuana here, cannabis, you know, Good definitely point. keeps stress levels down. Stress will really complicate uh, AIDS, makes you hungry, and that's another wasting away issue. And uh, uh, hopefully lots of people suffering from HIV and AIDS are also using hemp seeds <coughs> because there's such a, a great immunity omega boosting. Omega-3, 6, and omega nine, three, six and is 9. Yeah. Very, very health-giving immunity <coughs> thing. And I think the combination of uh, cannabis and AIDS is one of the best things in the whole pharmacopoeia in dealing with with the situation. Absolutely, and I fundamentally couldn't agree with you more. I don't mean to cut this short. I would love to do another interview where we have more time and I can line up some questions and uh, do a little research. But thanks very much for hey, taking the time with you. Hey, cheers. Welcome to Cheers. Take care, guys. This is Jason Wilcox coming from the Vapor Lounge in the BCMP, the BC Medical Marijuana Party. He asked me to been upstairs, downstairs, and around the store to show you what it's all about. But this is the scene in Vancouver. This is where it's at. You can hear the music from across the street. You can hear it now. I ain't got much more to say than that. I'm going to finish my joint and then mosey on over to the seed bank. Blocky, blocky. It's all that. okay now. In this part, I actually got to smoke a joint. Because without some medication, it's kind of hard not to get excited about Daniel Larson's new club, the Medicinal Cannabis Dispensary, which uh, you know I'm pretty proud to uh, to be a uh, part of. Um, this is one of their cards here, and um, I'm really impressed because this is the fanciest card of all the clubs. I'm a member at all the clubs pretty much here in BC, the, except the one up. Yeah, no, I'm pretty much a member at all of them, I think. But uh, anyway, this one here uh, is alone most color and most detail and uh, you know provides pretty clear information, membership number, the date that uh, I was issued the card, first and last name, um, their full address, phone number, website, um, it's a client card and it also says exactly what it's for and that's for marijuana and to possess, and to possess it and that they dispense it to them. So once again, that's the